Good morning. Welcome to our online service here at Zion San Francisco. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that you have promised that you will be with us, that you will never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior, who died on a cross for all of our sins, and not only did he die on the cross for all of our sins, and he also promised that he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. Father, as we uh, worship you this morning, strengthen our faith. Remind us that you are not only present with us, but that you will give us a greater awareness of this promise. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
please join me for confession and absolution. We bow our heads. Father, we come before you during these uncertain times. Some of us are going through some major storms. We are worried, concerned, and at times frightened. We confess that we lack faith in you. Father, strengthen our faith. Help us to believe that you are with us and that you will help us. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people. And what is yet to come? Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No. There is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and they said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. 
And as the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning and and welcome. Now I came across um, a story about this man. Um, He was visiting the county fair, and on one of these little tents, he saw a few words that said, I will teach you how to be a mind reader for $50. And so the man was intrigued. And so he um, decided to take the leap of faith. So he walked into this little tent. Well, inside this tent was this old man sitting behind a small table. And a guy walked in and he said, I guess you're here for the mind reading lesson. The man said, sure. And the older gentleman said, why don't you stay here? And so he walked outside of the tent, uh, pulled out a hose, and brought the other end to the man and said, here, hold it. The man looked at him and said, why should, why do you, why should I hold this? The old man said, it is part of the lesson. And he says, okay. And then the man said, why don't you look inside and tell me what you see? So the man took the hose, looked inside, and he responded to the older man and said, all I see is darkness, I don't see anything. Right at that moment, the old man walked over and turned on the faucet. The water shot into his face. He said, I had a feeling you were going to do that. The guy said, you are a mind reader. Now give me my $50. Well. I'm not a mind reader. I'm not a psychic. I don't know when the next storm will come. But what I do know is this. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Which means that if you're not experiencing trouble now, you're going to be experiencing trouble in the future. It's part of living in this broken world. As we live in this world, we face many types of storms. We are all facing a global storm at this time called COVID-19. And some of us, on top of that, we're all facing storms of illnesses, or maybe unemployment, or maybe broken relationships. My friends, whatever storms we're going through, our first reaction is we feel overwhelmed. And we wonder how we're going to emerge, how we're going to come out of the storm. But friends, I have good news for you. The good news is we're all going to make it because Jesus is present with us. Just as how he was present with his disciples years ago, he is present with us as we continue to weather this storm. He is with us every moment of our time. In every circumstances, he says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever ever forsake you. Friends, do you know that Jesus is with you? You know, oftentimes I hear people pray this way, Father, please be with me. Please be, wait, stop, 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 stop. Did not, didn't Jesus have promised, never will I leave you nor forsake you? This is something we don't need to ask for, but rather had already been promised to us. So what we really need is more than just knowledge that he is with us. What we need really is an awareness that he is with us. You see, when we are aware that God is with us, we have courage. That's my first point. When we are more aware of his presence, when we are aware that he is with us, courage rises up. Let me read to you from uh, Joshua 1.9. Now, the setting of this is that Joshua was the next leader behind Moses. Moses had already died. In fact, the people of Israel 
they adored Moses. I mean, Moses led them out of Egypt. If you remember the plagues and you remember crossing the Red Sea, all the miracles, how God had miraculously provided for them in the desert. But now Moses dies and Joshua is tasked to lead them forward into the promised land to take land that belonged to the enemy. This is what God says to Joshua 1. God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wow. So when there is the presence of God, there is courage. When we are aware that God is with us, courage begins to rise up. Just like Joshua, when he was aware that God was with us, with them, he had courage. Friend, there's another story in the Bible that illustrates this. Now, um, what happened was that Jesus had fed the 5,000 with only five loaves and two small fish. If you remember that story, uh, he fed 5,000 men, including their families, which means somewhere around 15, 10 to 15,000, maybe 20,000 people. After he fed them, um, he was dismissing them and he had his disciples get into the boat to go on ahead of him. While they were traveling, Jesus dismissed the crowd. After the dismissal, he went up on a mountaintop and he began praying. As he was praying, the disciples were struggling. The Bible text tells us that there was wind, a strong wind was blowing against their boats. They were struggling. Not only were they struggling, but a careful, if you carefully analyze the text, they were probably out there rowing for about anywhere between nine to 12 hours. In fact, they were exhausted. They were in trouble. Then Jesus came on the fourth watch, which means somewhere between 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning. No, 3 to, 3 to 6 a.m. 3 to 6 a.m. in the morning, walking on water. Their first reaction is that it's a ghost. But I don't blame them. I think every one of us would say that. But then he said to them, take courage. Don't be afraid. It is I, God. Peter saw him right away and Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And so Peter had the courage because not only did he see Jesus, but he had the awareness that Jesus, this divine being was with him. So he began to step out and began walking on water because courage rose up within him. So as he began walking on water, and we know what happened, he lost that awareness. His awareness went to the winds and the waves. He realized he should not be walking on water and he began to sink. And he shouted, Lord, save me. Jesus went over, grabbed his hand, And both of them went into the boat, and it was completely calm. Friends, it is when we are aware that God is with us that our courage rises up. I think the question is this. How do we become more aware that he is with us? We know he is with us because he's promised it so many times. But how do we become more aware? Well, I think the problem is that it's very easy for us to doubt. It's very easy for us to lose focus. It's very easy for fear to creep into our hearts. Well, this is how we can uh, be more aware. Thank Jesus that he is with you. Keep thanking him. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are with me. Even though you don't feel it, even though you can't see it, Say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being with me. 
and start thanking him. Lord Jesus, thank you for what's good in your life. Thank Jesus for what is going well in your life. Thank Jesus for the roof over the top of your head. Thank Jesus for your family or your friends, whatever it is. The more you thank Jesus, the more you are aware that he is with you. When you're aware that he is with you, courage rises up. Another thing is when you are aware that Jesus is with you, you have assurance that God can take anything and turn it into something good. In fact, St. Paul wrote in Romans 8.28, he said, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who loved him, who have been called according to his purpose. Notice Paul said, not some things, not small things, not big things. He said, in all things, everything is included. God works for good for those who loved him and are called according to his purposes. God can take anything and bring good out of it. One time there was a, um, well, there was a child who was with grandma. Now, um, he was just sitting there, and grandma asked him, how's your day? The kids started talking about, well, you know, he doesn't like school, and started to talk about why he didn't like school, didn't have friends, and, and then later on he started talking about his family, how there's conflict, and how mom and dad is sick, and and he went on and on and, you know, a lot of negative things. And finally, Grandma said, would you like a snack? He said, sure. And so Grandma brought over some oil. He went, yuck. Then Grandma brought over some raw eggs. He said, oh, yuck, how do I eat this? Then she brought over some flour and some baking soda. Yuck. And then Grandma explained to, to him, you know, grandson, you know, these things by itself may seem yucky, but when I put them together, give it a little time, bake it, it becomes the most delicious cake. And that's how life is. Sometimes we don't understand why God allows these things to happen, and these things to happen. But when we believe and trust him, God will take everything and put them in a specific order and bring good out of it. Friends, we don't know why we're going through what we're going through, but we know there is a God that can take anything and bring good out of it. When we are aware of his presence, we have that assurance. That's what happened to Job. If you know the story of Job, remember Job, first, he lost, overnight, he lost everything he owned, all his livestock. His wealth was gone like overnight. Then he lost his 10 children. The roof over a, a, a house collapsed over them. Then he had marriage troubles. I mean, his wife was upset with him. His, his wife told him, why don't you curse God and die? And to make matters worse, his health. He was ill. And so it's like, it seemed like this storm was a big, nasty storm, one wave after another. But he didn't lose his integrity. He continued to trust God. It was during this time that, that Job got to know God in a very amazing way a very intimate way. In fact, he had a conversation with God and God talked to him about creation. He shared with him many deep things about life. And at the end of this whole thing, God restored everything. My friends, I mean, during this time of uncertainty, it's an opportunity for us to get to know our creator. It's an opportunity for us to get to know the Lord even deeper. Spend some time reading the Bible. Spend some time in prayer talking to Jesus. Spend some time reading books that will encourage your faith. What happened to Job was that after the storm was over, 
God restored everything. God restored his marriage, and so 10 of his kids had died previously. His wife bore him 10 more kids, three beautiful daughters, seven sons. Not only that, God doubled his wealth. He was wealthy before. God doubled it. On top of that, he restored his health. And on top of that, the friends that used to despise him would come to him and say, please pray for me. My friends, when we are aware that Jesus is with us, when we are aware, we have assurance that God can take anything and turn it into good. In fact, Psalm 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When Jesus is with us, whatever we're going through, the storm will come to an end. He will take the bad and turn it into something good. Finally, when you are aware of his presence, when you are aware that Jesus is with you, you will actually see him. Well, one time there was a, a woman who uh, had a doctor's appointment. And this is very typical of what happens to us. She walks into the doctor's office and a doc, her doctor has some very bad news to break to her. Her doctor says, you have cancer. And she described in her testimony right away, she felt like her doctor threw a dark black, black blanket over her head. It was full, she was full of fear. She froze. She couldn't hear a thing after the doctor said that. In fact, the doctor wanted to inform her that even though this is bad news, the good news is that you're in the early stages and it can be treated effectively with radiation. Now, she couldn't hear that. She was frozen by fear. She couldn't even hear. She couldn't even move. She said, had it not for her, for her daughter, she would not have made it out of the doctor's office and into the car. Well, this was not comfortable for her. This was hard. Finally, she made an appointment with the radiologist a week later. And so she walked into the office, and she was very fearful, and she met the radiologist. Well, the radiologist can sense her fear and asked her, are you afraid? And she said, yes. And she admitted that she was afraid and afraid of her diagnosis, also afraid of the treatment. And so the radiologist said to her, well, can I pray for you? Do you mind if I pray for you? She said, please. And so right away, he prayed a very powerful prayer for her. And then he began to explain to her that, you know, what you have is in the very early stages. In fact, it's very treatable with radiation. Right away, she began to calm down. There was a spirit of calmness within her. Then she had her first treatment. And then the second time she went to her radiologist, and she explained to him how that prayer how it was so effective and powerful that it had helped her a lot. Well, he asked, would you like me to pray for you again prior to the treatment? And so he prayed for her again. Well, then she received more peace and calm. In fact, this went on for 32 treatments. She told her friends she had 32 radiation treatments and also 32 prayer treatments. Well, during her last treatment, she said that she kind of felt sorry that it was coming to an end. In fact, she kind of enjoyed and missed that prayer time with the radiologist. Well, when everything was over, she was all alone. You know, a few weeks after that, she began to realize, wait a minute, why did I f feel so at peace? Well, Jesus walked on water. Jesus was working through this radiologist who prayed for me, who reminded me that, that he is with me. It wasn't until weeks later she realized that that was Jesus working through this man. Friends, oftentimes that God works through people. 
Sometimes it is through a smile. Sometimes it is through a word of reassurance. Sometimes it is through a hug. Sometimes it is through an act of kindness. You see, when we are aware that Jesus is with us, we start seeing him in our everyday lives through the people that we meet with, through the people that surround us, through a random stranger sometimes. Friends, it's, we need more than to just know that Jesus is with us. We need the awareness. When we are aware, courage rises up to help us deal with our storms. When we are aware that Jesus is present, we have assurance that he can take anything bad, anything, and turn it into something good for us. And when we are aware of his presence, we begin to see him in our lives. Amen. May God richly bless you. Please join me for prayer. Father, we thank you that you are with us. Help us to be aware of this every day in every moment of our lives. Lord, we also ask that your spirit and your power, your wisdom would be with our doctors and our nurses. Help them to treat those who are affected by the virus. Help them to treat others with other illnesses. And we also lift up our scientists, our labs, those who are trying to find the vaccine and the treatment for the coronavirus. Lord, give them heavenly wisdom. Give our lawmakers, our leaders, the wisdom to go forward uh, or not with these uh, trials. And we ask that you will continue to watch over us and remind us that we, that you see us, even though there are times when we don't see you. We thank you for your promise. Help us to be more aware that you are with us every moment of time. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to, prop, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. God bless you all. When peace